Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joyofbaking.com. Today we're going to make a lemon cranberry pound cake and this is what it looks like. This is so moist, it's buttery sweet, nice lemon flavor, full of dried cranberries, and then once we bake it, we're going to ice it with a confectioner glaze. So the first thing you will need to do, now I like to do this probably, you know, at least an hour, maybe a couple hours before we uh, make the batter, is in a small saucepan, you will need to put one cup, which is 120 grams of dried cranberries. And if they're fairly large, I like to coarsely chop them. So put that in a saucepan along with a third of a cup, which is 80 milliliters, 80 grams of lemon juice. Now, before you squeeze your, lemon, your lemons, take off the zest, that's the outer yellow skin. Put that aside, because we will need it. So put that in the saucepan along with two tablespoons which is 20 grams. Now you could, of alcohol. Now you don't have to, but you know, we make this typically at Christmas time and a little booze is, makes it better. Um, so you could use like, I used a cherry brandy today. You could use rum, you could use uh, limoncello, you could use Grand Marnier, you know, whatever you want. So put that in the saucepan, bring it to a boil. And then as soon as it boils, take it off the heat, cover it. And then we're going to let it like sit and steep and cool down and the cranberries will absorb that wonderful lemon alcohol. <laughs> and so then this is what you have. It's gonna really flavor our cranberries. So once it cools to room temperature, what I'm gonna do is I just have a little measuring cup, just a bowl or something with a little strainer. And I'm just going to put them in here and strain out the juice and do not throw away that wonderful juice because we are going to use that to brush our pound cake when it comes out of the oven. So there we have it. I'll just let that drain that aside. So then when you're ready to make your batter, preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius, and you will need a 10 inch, 25 centimeter bunt pan they're all different shapes. Mine's a pretty traditional shape, but I notice there's really fancy ones nowadays. If you wanna buy one of those. And then what I'm gonna do is butter. And I've kinda of already done that because there's all these little nooks and crannies. You don't wanna watch me do that. So just butter it. And then what we're gonna do is flour our pan just to make sure we don't want that our pound cake to stick so you can do this over the sink if you want so just do that and just kind of move it around to get the flour all the way around now you can buy now these um you know sprays it's noisy. Okay, there we go. If you don't want to butter and flour your pan, you can now buy those sprays that are kind of a vegetable oil flour spray. So you could do that. So now that, that's that. So now for our batter, if you have an electric stand mixer like I have here, use your paddle attachment. You could use a hand mixer for this. So I have in a bowl, three cups, 600 grams of granulated white sugar. Now remember I said keep your zest. So you will need two tablespoons, six grams of grated lemon zest. And what I'm gonna do, as you can see, it kind of clumps. So I'm gonna just, right at the beginning here, I'm just going to, with a fork, mix it in with the sugar. One, it flavors the sugar, and two, it, it gets rid of those clumps. Because there's nothing, you don't want when you bite into a pound cake to have like a big clump of lemon zest. So this helps stop that. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now, you will need one cup, which is 225 grams of butter. Have it at room temperature. I'm using unsalted. You could use salted, whichever you prefer. 
If you do use salted butter, then I would leave out the salt that is called for in the recipe. So I'm just going to beat this until it gets nice and smooth. And when you're making any cake or just any batter, you know, scrape down the sides and the bottom of your bowl as much as you need to. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little of the sugar. And then I'm going to just have my mixer on low speed and just beat all the sugar in. And then once I do that, I'm going to continue to beat on medium high speed until the, until the mixture gets really nice and light and fluffy. You know, that'll take anywhere maybe three to five minutes, depending on your mixer. So, as you can see, nice and well mixed, and we've lightened it up, our batter. So now, what we're going to do is add one and a half teaspoons, that's six grams of pure vanilla extract for flavoring. So if you do not want a lemon flavor, you can just leave that out, or sorry, a vanilla flavor. But I love vanilla, so I'm going to add it. And now what we're going to do is add one at a time six large eggs, which is 300 grams of eggs, uh, and have your eggs at room temperature. So I'm going to beat, add one, beat it in, then the next one, the next one, until they're all mixed in. Good. So now, in a separate bowl, I have three and a half cups, which is 455 grams of all-purpose flour. You may know that as plain flour. To that, I'm going to add a half a teaspoon, uh, two grams of baking soda, and then a half a teaspoon, two grams of salt. I'm using a kosher salt. I like the flavor. I find a little milder than the uh, table salt, but you could use either one here. And if you don't have a whisk, you could also sift your ingredients together. And then you will also need now one cup, 240 milliliters, 240 grams of sour cream. I am using a full fat here. And if you don't have sour cream, the other choice would be a plain yogurt. So now what I'm going to add is add the uh, flour in three portions. So add about a third now. And then I'm going to alternate that with my sour cream. So now do this on low speed. You don't want the flour coming up at you. Add about half of your sour cream. Okay. Now, a little more flour. The reason we alternate back and forth as opposed to adding all the flour at once is that you would have to, because there's a lot of flour here, a lot of batter, you'd be beating this for a long time, which we don't want to do. We just want to beat it to combine, so if you do it in stages, it is a lot easier. So, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to add the rest of my sour cream, but then I'm going to also add my cranberries at this point so they get all mixed in. I'm just going to 
press to make sure. Now, keep that liquid there, remember, because I said we are going to use it. We're going to brush our baked pound cake with it. So just put it, whoop, just put it aside. So I'm just going to add that. And then, if you are making this, making a mess here, if you are making this at Christmas time, which is typically when I make it, what I like to do is add a third of a cup, 60 grams of candied mix peel. I think I love candy mix peel, and I think it goes well with the cranberries. You don't have to. It's really optional here. So I'm just going to beat that in. And now I'm going to add the rest of our flour. As you can see, this is a lot of batter. This is a large cake, makes a lot of servings. Perfect for a large crowd. And this also freezes this pound cake. You can freeze pound cakes, so that's another option. You can make it and then freeze it, or freeze any leftovers. Okay, so move all this. And I do have a little flour on the sides. We want to make sure that's all mixed in. And now I'm just going to, this is heavy, <laughs> a lot of batter here. So now you can take the back of a spoon, or I have an offset spatula, and just even that out. So, this, as you can see, a lot of batter, large cake. Everyone's oven is a little different, but I find this is going to take at least 60 minutes. It could take up to about 75, so it does take a while. It will rise a bit, it will turn nice golden brown, and when you put a toothpick and just put it into the center here, um, you will get like a few moist crumbs. That's what you're looking for. Not completely dry toothpick, a little few moist crumbs. So 60 to about 75 minutes. Our lemon cranberry pound cake is done as you can see it's risen beautiful golden brown and when I put a toothpick in the center here just a few moist crumbs now I forgot to mention if your pan because sometimes some bunt pans are dark colored if that is the case what you want to do at the beginning is to preheat your oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit so lower your oven temperature by 25 degrees F 15 degrees C so now what we're going to do, you put your pan on a wire rack and then remember that cranberry juice that I said do not throw away. So now what we're going to do, take a pastry brush and I'm just going to brush the top with some of that juice. Oh, I really smell it. Oh, the lemon, a little bit of that cherry brandy. So you're going to use, you know, maybe a third or so of your cranberry juice. And then we're gonna let this cool like maybe 15 more minutes in the pan. And then when we come back, we will take it out of the pan. So now to take our cake out of the pan, I'm using an offset spatula. And because my pan actually is nonstick, I am using a, like a silicone uh, offset. 
because you don't want to scratch your pan. So just make sure it's not sticking. Looks good. And don't forget the inner core here. And then I will take a rack and flip it. And let's hope it comes out nice and easy. Okay, there we go. It's really nice, the shape of the bunt pan. It makes a pretty cake, doesn't it? So now, take the rest of our syrup left over, and I'm just going to brush the cake. Now, we brush with the syrup, one, of course, to flavor it. It has a nice lemony cranberry flavor with a little brandy. And the other is it helps to keep our uh, pound cake nice and moist. So... Now, we are going to uh, put a glaze, pour a glaze over the top of our cake. So once I finish brushing it, I will have to let the cake cool completely. You know, that's going to take at least an hour. You do not have to um, put a glaze on this. It is very good on its own, and you could just dust the top with some powdered sugar. But we're going to go all out here today. So... When the cake cools completely, we will come back and make our lemon frosting. So now for our lemon glaze. Remember I said it is optional, you don't have to. So what I do is take my cake that's on the rack and I just put it over a baking sheet because as, we, as the frosting runs down, it may go into the pan. So then for the glaze, very easy. I have one cup. 120 grams of sifted confectioner sugar, you know, may know that as powder or icing sugar, and two tablespoons of freshly squeezed lemon juice. Put that in there, and then I'm going to just mix that up. So what we want is a glaze that, you know, is pourable. You don't want it too thin, you don't want it too thick. <laughs> so we will see what this looks like. You want to sift your icing sugar just to make sure to get rid of any lumps. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. Pretty thick. So now I'm just going to pour it over the top. Then typically what you want to do now is just let it dry before you, before you cut it or before you store it. But for the, well, fix that. But because of time, we will cut it. So um, let's use a sharp knife and cut it. So questions. Yes, you could use orange juice instead of lemon juice. You could use other dried fruits. You could even use fresh cranberries. Do you have to soak the uh, cranberries in the, at the beginning, that first step? No, you don't. But then you won't have a soaking syrup. And so what you're going to... But you won't have the soaking syrup for at the end to brush the cake, but then you're still going to have a, you know, a really nice, soft and moist pound cake, even if you don't do that step. So that is an option. So there we have our pound cake. It's a really nice looking, you can see the, the flecks of the cranberries. You know, if you wanted, you could even add more dried fruit than what I did if you really want a lot of fruit in your cake. Especially the first day you do this, you make it. Your the uh, crust 
it's quite crisp, which is very good. Um, I like that. And the cake is wonderfully soft and moist. It's buttery, of course, sweet. But you know what? I know that sounds like a lot of sugar. But because of the lemon juice and the cranberries, it is not an overly sweet cake. And then, you know, I think the glaze just kind of finishes it off nicely. This, you can store this probably at room temperature close to a week, probably maybe a little longer if you do it in the fridge. You could freeze it. Although I, if I freeze it, I do prefer to freeze it without the frosting on it because I don't think that the uh, glaze kind of type of frosting does not freeze very well. So really, try this one. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joyofbaking.com.